Hi, I'm Mike Maloney, and welcome to another CSRM podcast. Today's episode is hosted by Dr. Greg Linville. Hello, friends. I hope you're doing great here today. Uh, welcome to another CSRM podcast. I am joined with, by Dr. Uh, Greg Linville, and I'm also joined with Scott Stedman as we are continuing the conversation from the book, the fourth in our series, the saving of a sports ministry. Uh, Greg, why don't you just go ahead and dive off, just dive, dive in, pick up where you left off last time as we kind of, we asked a lot of good questions for people to really evaluate where they were in terms of numbers and then the reasons behind those numbers, which is way more important. When it comes to soteriology, um, the saving of sports ministry, build off of that why why should we ask these questions? Why should we keep delving into these topics within our local churches? Yeah, a quick summary of where we've been is that if we don't get this right, you as the sports minister is going to be out of a job. <laughs> if nothing else, that yeah. should be motivation. Uh, but more importantly, overall, if we don't get this right, we're not actually doing the Great Commission. We're not actually bringing people into a saving knowledge of Jesus. We're not going and making disciples. And so part of the part of what we said last time that we need to reiterate here if people didn't log on to that one is we're talking about your success statistics. What do you deem at the end of the day as being successful? And we defined last time that some people just say, Whoever raised their hand and said they liked Jesus that day, a day's decision. Sometimes they add to that or only go by were they baptized. And depending upon if you're a baptism or a confirmation denomination, but they made some public profession. And then some would move it to that they've actually gone through long-term discipleship teaching. I know of a church that's called, they've got a thing called Deeper Waters. It's like three years yeah. worth of 15-week sessions three times a year that, that go through all these things. And they don't feel like you've really been discipled unless you've gone through that. I, I think that's probably more accurate. Yeah. And so how many of our su success statistics have actually completed that journey? That's what we're after now. There's some false indicators of success statistics, and that's what we've just talked about, that, oh, we got those many people to raise hands. We can't be satisfied with that. But there's an ongoing issue here about how to get this right, and it's what was brought to us by Dietrich Bonhoeffer and some other theologians, and many uh, already pastors and others will recognize that it was called cheap grace, cheap grace. This is the underlying part of all of this counting conversions rather than developing disciples. Uh, let's just identify some of this. A cheap grace approach would be that you can continue to live together and not get married, that you can divorce for any reason, so your marriage, it starts to mess with your marriage and your sex life. Or you, how you raise your kids. Yeah, you got to have the kids in the church every week. That means maybe getting out of the boat on a Lord's Day morning and getting into the ark, so to speak, the church. And the Lord's Day, is it just the Lord's hour or is it a full day? It used to be we got three meals on a, on a Lord's Day. we go in the morning to the worship service and the Sunday school, and then we would go and have our family altar around the lunch table or, or, or supper table, the devotions there, and then we'd go back for the evening service. In what other what other world, if, if I said to you, you got to produce the same results, but we're going to cut it in half, would you say, yeah, that's a good thing? 
So we're going to cut out the evening, Lord's Day. We're going to cut it out. You're going to get the same results now just from Sunday morning. Oh, and I'm going to cut it in half again. So you only have to go to a worship service and not to a Christian ed hour. What sense does that make? And so when we're talking about cheap grace, the Lord's day, the Lord's concept of being with the Lord's people is really, really important. Finances. Yeah, the starting point is 10% given to the Lord's work. 10%. You know what? As a financial advisor, Jesus wouldn't make it because he, he allows you to keep 90% of it. <laughs> But 10% is where you start. Sacrificial giving comes over that. And, and what about integrity? Yeah, I have to tell the truth. Yeah, I have to be honest. Yeah, I have to, to organize and run my business in ethical ways. And what about all those vices? I, I'm speaking to my grandparents' society, playing the lottery. That's the Lord's money. Temperance. It's not a sin to drink. It is a sin to be drunk. But how much of that money that is spent on tobacco, alcohol, etc., the vices that could be going to the Lord's work? I, I, I know. Even my grandmother would say, why do you go to the cinema? Because there's nothing there that's going to be advantageous. Okay, I, I don't want to get into a Sabbatarian um, or a fundamentalist approach to this kind of stuff. But I think we need to ask some questions and think about the rich young ruler. Jesus didn't let him off. Go and sell everything and then come and follow me. And I'm not saying that was for him. That's not a, 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 something that all of us are supposed to sell everything. That's, that's a wrong way to exegete that passage. But the principle is still there that we should be willing to sacrifice everything for the kingdom. And so when we get this cheap grace that is equated to easy believism, what we call easy believism, that all you got to do is believe in Jesus and you don't have to change a thing about your life. Again, it's not the changing of life that gives you salvation, but it's salvation that gives you the power to change your life. And that's why we need to help our sports ministers in our local churches and our sports-related para-ministers get people to solid believism, not easy believism. Well, I've run off there. Scott or Dan, pick it up from there. No, I think it's a good challenge. We're looking at chapter four and the book, uh, The Saving of Sports Ministry. And Greg, I think these are great personal questions and personal challenges that we must ask ourselves. And of course, that bleeds into our sports ministry and in, into the local church. You know, I think when we think about Jesus, um, so often he encouraged people to count the cost, right? Not only to count the cost and, and how you spend your money and not going to debt and all that, but I think in terms of following him, when he says to literally pick up the instrument of death, the cross, and follow me, uh, that's not cheap. That that costs a lot. The fact that he himself spent three years pouring into people who even after he was was gone, uh, they were scared for a while. They were waiting on the Holy Spirit. They're locked in a room. And it wasn't until the Holy Spirit came that they started to actually venture out and do the things that he said. So he empowered them, but it took three years. It yeah. took a lot of time. It took three years without the distraction of things like this and other things we have going on. We're so busy in our culture that to give the Lord an hour on Sunday, and Greg, I think your breakdown of history and how the church has changed makes a lot of sense to say, I can give you an hour a week, which for most people, <clears throat> excuse me, is really more like an hour a month. Because prior to COVID, that's what that's what an active church member would do is they go to church once or twice each month, and that was it. We're not talking about small groups. We're not talking about tithing. We're not talking about sharing their faith, that sort of thing. And so, I think we should be challenged by this because when we look at what it cost Jesus on the cross, grace should not be cheap. And I think it's a, a good challenge for sports ministers and for churches to really work through together. 
And Dan, I would I would echo all of that mm -hmm. and totally affirm it. But what that does then to the local sports ministry, local church sports ministry, is that when we start to talk about it, remember we use the word proclamation. Proclamation is what we do with our lives, how we live it out, how we do all these things. And then we affirm it. We affirm the gospel with our words. And when we start to affirm the gospel with our words, it needs to be salted with these kinds of things. We're asking you, sports ministry participant, adult league participant, whatever, we're asking you to consider making Jesus Christ not only your Savior, but your Lord. That's going to mean, and we might list a few things that I just went over without, re without going over them again. Yes, it's going to mean this. Yes, it's going to mean that. Yes, it's going to mean that. But we have a way here that'll take you through those steps and you'll never regret it because you're not going to have any regrets in life. Your life is going to be transformed. And, and, and it will change our approach. The local church sports minister right now just says, hey, love Jesus, and at best, you won't go to hell. That's kind of the best thing that they offer. Well, that's great. We, yes, that was part of the reason why I came to faith. I didn't want to go to hell. But man, more importantly, if I can be told how I, I can solve my problems on life here, but that it comes with a cost, that's it's going to change how we approach that in the local church. And I think it goes back to, I know we mentioned this in the last podcast from P.F. Meyer's book, The Life of the Shoe. Uh, it goes back to that process of you, you win people to Christ, you build them up, you disciple them, and then you send them out so that they can do the exact same thing. So it's not only the sports minister. When the sports minister gets this right, and the people within the ministry context begin to replicate because they have gone through a discipleship process because they've been poured into. And then they ask someone the right questions about faith when they share the gospel. That's when this whole thing works. When the local church recognizes that the best resource is not just their their budget, although that's that's helpful, but the best resources are the people. And if they are equipped and discipled, and yes, they raise their hand, they come down the aisle, they they come to saving faith in Jesus, that's great. But that's the starting line, not the finish line. And when they multiply other followers of Christ, because they recognize the Great Commission isn't just for the pastor or the sports minister or both. It's for me, too, because now I, I have been poured into, I know enough to share my faith. That's when the thing really begins to, to, to take off. And that's when our communities are changed and our culture is changed. And all of that. So, Greg, any any closing thoughts here before we? Because uh, we're almost out of time <clears throat> again. Excuse me, but any any closing thoughts here? Yeah, we're we're gonna go forward now, and we're gonna start talking about gospel centricity and what that means to the local church sports ministry. And we're gonna talk a lot more about how to make this very practical in the local church as we go forward. So, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I think it's been a great conversation thus far, and we are out of time. Uh, we encourage you to share this podcast, to uh, buy one of these books, The Saving of Sports Ministry. It looks just like this. You can get it through our website, csrm.org. And we look forward to the practical conversation that we will have together next time. So on behalf of Scott and Greg, thank you so much for joining us here today. And we'll catch you next time. Take care. The CSRM Podcast is a production of CSRM and their production house, Overwhelming Victory. Dr. Greg Linville is the executive producer, and Scott Stedman is the associate producer and editor. To learn more about CSRM, visit csrm.org. For more information about Overwhelming Victory, visit overwhelmingvictory.org. The CSRM Podcast is the flagship member of the podcast network, Overwhelming Victory Radio. For more information on Overwhelming Victory Radio, or to listen to our partner podcasts, visit overwhelmingvictory.org backslash OV radio. For CSRM Podcasts, I'm Mike Maloney. Have a blessed day.